Man, we are so blessed. And you can uh, feel free to take a seat and compliment at least one person on your way down. You know the drill. <laughs> I, was just, I was just saying to some of our family and friends this morning, we got a pretty good-looking church, right? And I think it's okay to say that. Um, yeah, you know, I've got, I've got a, a kids of my own, and um, we, we brag on our family, and it's okay to brag on you guys because I'm really proud of you guys. Not only do you have skills, abilities, gifts, and talents and all that, you're honestly, this has got to be the best looking church. Sorry for anybody else watching right now. You, you're included, no kidding. But honestly, like, you, this is an amazing group of good looking people. And I know that God wants to pull that beauty that he's also put inside of you, dreams, desires, passions, he wants to come out of you because that's why you're here today. God's got a word for you today, but I think you can agree with me that there's something inside of you that feels like that you were called to more, yes or no? Come on. And I know it is a God-appointed time that we have uh, in our midst, Dr. Al. And before I welcome him up, I just want to say a little bit about Dr. Al. If you've ever had a dream that scared you to death, that's how you probably know it's a God-sized dream. A dream that you could, couldn't possibly do on your own, but you knew if you didn't do something about it, that you wouldn't just miss out, but other people would miss out. What if a nation would miss out if you didn't step forward in faith and stayed stuck in your fear? Well, Dr. Al has a testimony of that. I'm not going to give everything up. Uh, but he's heading back to Thailand back in uh, around 82, shortly after Vietnam War and everything had, had happened. He was called um, to Thailand with his beautiful bride, Terry. And with their four kids, he adopted 27 more kids. You think I have a lot of kids. But with this family ministry, I think it's okay to call it, that's what it is. If you get to meet him and, and get to meet his kids, you will see they are all passionate about the Lord. They all have different gifts and abilities. Um, his daughter, Rebecca, just to brag on Becky a little bit, has one of the best Christian artists, labels, and sings and writes songs along with the worship team and travels all over Asia. Like they just, yeah, this is, this is in our victory DNA. So sometimes we think, man, we must be the only ones with, you know, Rudy and Steph and College Street Worship. I'm telling you, we're part of something much bigger. And um, would, you, would you do me the privilege and honor of giving it up for our, our guest speaker today, Dr. Al Purvis? Come on. Thank you. Right on. So I know, Dr. Al, there's more stuff we'll, we'll get into here when it comes to the big dream. And what, what a lot of people don't see sometimes is the sacrifice behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they, we say sometimes we're too busy, you know, for those of you that are on social media, only about 10% of you, right? But that are on social media, that we tend to compare other people's highlight reels right, to our behind the scenes. What you don't see is the success because of what happens behind the scenes, because of the dedication behind the scenes, because of sacrifice behind the scenes. But before we jump into all that, Dr. Alba, the first question I had for you is, could you tell us a little bit about your story of how you came to become a missionary and plant churches uh, all throughout Asia? Yeah, well, exciting story, you know, and it does bounce off of that time of the end of the Vietnam War and you know we heard about a lot of refugees and that kind of thing and really felt like there's something that we should do for kids that were ending up in camps in Thailand mm -hmm. and um, you know you just you just kind of some of those things burn in your heart and it's like you say it's the dream and you can't shake it right I, I mean you you'd, you have to work harder to resist it <laughs> than you do to follow it. <laughs> it's just totally unnatural to resist it. And so we're thinking about these, um, these kids, you know, little kids that are, that are growing up or, or not growing up or should be growing up. And something rises in your heart and you just, you just think, you know what, it's not right 
that any kid should have to grow up without parents. Mm -hmm. I don't care where it is, right? It's just not right that they shouldn't have to grow up without role models, without parents, and um, so that they can become all that God has created them to be. So that was, that was kind of, it's just burning on our hearts. And at that point, we had three little kids, Margaret, Becky, and Chris. <laughs> she was four, Becky was two, Chris was four months old when we got on the plane, you know. And uh, to them, it was, it was just the most exciting thing. I, can I go back, Matt, to the idea of sacrifice? Yeah, because <laughs> it wasn't in my notes. Sorry, <laughs> I remember. No, it's a good one. I just because it, it's so important, you know, um, when you're fulfilling a dream or following a dream or something that God has given, put on your heart. Um, we got we landed in Thailand and got settled in this house in Bangkok. Bangkok, huge city, 17 million or something at the time, and I'd, I'd never lived in a city before. Um, I never actually ridden on a bus or a train or an airplane or taken a taxi before. Come on, in my life, and uh, and grew up on the farm, you know. And so, so, you know, one of our directors, uh, we got contacted somehow. I think it was all through mail in those days. And he said, "So, so, how is it over there? Is, you know, what's what sort of level of sacrifice are you guys having to make, you know, to be there with your kids and everything like that?" And I said, "Man." So this is pretty cool. First time in my life we've had running water. And, and a, a telephone in the house. And electricity that you just turn the switches on. Man. Go <laughs> so, figure, right? <laughs> so it's all a matter of perspective, you know. And, um, and really the sacrifice, we've never actually uh, recognized that or, or really thought about that. Hmm. Being a sacrifice. Uh, honestly, the thing that really that we've had to sacrifice is to be able to spend time with our family and friends. Mm. But God is restoring all that. We get back to Canada and we do all that. But the truth is, if you think about it, how much time do you really spend with them anyway? <laughs> you know, unless you're really intentional. <laughs> and, I, and I think, you know, overall we've been able to see the people that we love probably more yeah. by being gone and intentionally seeing them than, wow. yeah, happenstance. So, yeah. That's it. Unreal. So, by the way, where were you uh, initially planted before God sent you off? Where was your farm? Well, I grew up in, on a farm in, in B.C. By, by Fort Steele. Yeah, a B.C. guy. And um, got born again in Grand Prairie, and then we got sent out from Grand Prairie uh, wow. to Thailand. Yeah. Man. So, let's just go right into my next question for you. What is... One of the wildest things that has happened to you on the mission field, because I see all the pictures, you know, you're, you're into building Jeeps and you take your Jeeps out into the jungles and you take these young people on the back of elephants, like you, you're it. You're not like the, the yeah. pretend to be missionary, you know, like you, you're, you're it. You're in the jungle. You're well, doing the things. So what are... Yeah, but most of that's just image. Man. Oh, yeah? You know, no. <laughs> <laughs> who, who would really know, eh? Yeah. Yep. Unless you hey, come and see us, get a picture with me next to this elephant. <laughs> you can't be a you can't be a bona fide missionary unless you have a fifty two Willys Jeep. Come on, and uh, so so you know that's that's a big part of it. But but yeah, it's um, forty years of ministry there. The crazy things that have have happened. I mean, I can't a lot of it. I can't even re recall. You know, um, but it's been an, the most exciting thing you can imagine. We had. Our last baby, Esther, had her at home in the bedroom. Uh, that's exciting. A little bit nerve-wracking. And, um, you know, we landed in Lahore, Pakistan, the day that those um, riots broke out because of the Muslim cartoon bomb in the head. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. And landed in the airport, didn't, hadn't seen the news. Um, SWAT teams running everywhere and uh, spent, our, spent our, our week there sneaking down alleyways. And... Um, preaching in a conference until the riots got too heavy and then we'd have to go and lock ourselves in a room somewhere, you know, wow. hide out. And so there's been a lot of that stuff and physical, physical stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, if, if you, if you have a Jeep, you're going to have excitement because uh, <laughs> it's going to let you down and you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And, uh, and so that's always, that's always exciting. But I think, you know, the, the biggest excitement, the thing, the, the, the real thrill of all thrills in it, I think it is for everybody, is the miracles that mm -hmm. God does. Yeah. Um, when you see people's lives being touched and, 
Yeah, just not only healed their their diseases, but established in in the the, the perfect prosperous call of God on their lives. You know, that's what we live for, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And when you see that, there's just there's just nothing like that. And 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 we you know we've all got to have that because that's what kind of spurs us on. It's yeah. kind of what drives us and that 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 excitement of of reaching and, and seeing people and yeah. So I, I think that's really where it is. There's like I say, all kinds of you know physical things that have happened and and accidents and near death experiences and twice I had like heart attacks and once on an airplane going into Nepal and you know <laughs> things like that just from stress just just wow. from stress and um, so so there's a lot of that kind of stuff but really the 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 real excitement that drives us on is the the things that God is doing yeah it, it's amazing to have God use you. You know, I mean, we did. We come from the bush, living in a cabin up in Grand Prairie, and and to see that the God who created all things was interested enough to use us, you know, put us to work. So that's really cool, the best of all. And it's it's quite something. I would encourage all of you to take a trip to, to Thailand mm. and visit uh, Dr. Al and the team up there. They have You also have a Bible college there as well. We'll get, we'll get into that a little more. But the the creativity, the ingenuity, it, they built their own coffee shop. Like Starbucks, you got nothing on your guys' <laughs> coffee shop. You know, what do you call it, Hebrews? or <laughs> No, not quite. Sorry. Good one, though. <laughs> we do actually have the uh, Hebrews. Um, what do they call those things ladies put on? To oh, yeah. Yeah. Aprons? Or, aprons, yeah. yeah. We have Hebrews aprons there. Jehovah Java, I can help you out. <laughs> yeah, we could do right. a couple. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. I like that we, you talk about the transformation or people discovering their calling and their purpose. Um, would, you, would it be fair to say that, like for a lot, there's a lot of young people, a lot of friends that I've had that we've sent out, sent out your way because of the fruit, because we know they're not just going to go to some school, some Bible college. They're going to get used for the kingdom. And I love your heart for, especially for using young people, I love your heart for, for taking people where they see lack in their life and you show them a God that is limitless mm -hmm. and you challenge them. So could you speak a little bit to that about the, the, the conflict that we might, might face in here or in here, but then when faced with it when we have Christ, yeah. how that changes our calling? Right. It, it, could you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Um, I actually have a promise, a guarantee, money back guarantee, that if you come with me uh, to Thailand and we end up ministering in some jungle village all day and, and, and you know, you get tired and, and hungry and you get around the, the campsite and you've got some warm rice in your belly and a, a cup of, well, Milo hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. And um, you're up there on the side of some lonely mountain that nobody even knows where you're at, right? That you will hear from God. Come on. Guaranteed. <laughs> and the reason a lot of us don't hear as much as we want to hear, because we're still sitting where we were sitting. Come on. But last time he spoke to us, right? <laughs> okay. We won't get too far into that. But, but this, this deal, what you're talking about, Matt, that you see there is our willingness or our, our absolute passion mm. to invest in the next generations and the young, young generation. And so... Terry and I actually live in the Bible college with the students and on the bottom floor. And Matt and Becky live on the third floor and, and you know, Bible college in between and students above that. And uh, we just absolutely love that kind of a lifestyle. Yeah. We go everywhere together. We do everything together. It's like Jesus and disciples kind of Woo. a picture. And that's really the thing because what comes, you know, the, the key to succeeding as a young person, well, Paul said it. He said, be not slothful, don't be lazy, right? But be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And that's, is that Hebrews 6.12? Something like that, 12.6, 6.12. And, and the idea is follow people, and not just follow, but connect with people, mm -hmm. live with them, yeah. people who are doing what you want to do, the kind of thing that you want to do, yeah. right? Because that's what mentoring is all about. Yeah. Jesus said, follow me. Yes. Yeah. Right? It was, that was the deal. And they, and they did it all together. And then, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't expect people to succeed just on the basis of their training, on the basis mm -hmm. of their education, or on the basis of who they know or what. It's, it's really 
who they've really connected with in that, that relationship. So that's really where our biggest investment is that we feel mm -hmm. personally is to uh, spend our time with, with people who want to go where God wants them to go. Come on. Well, you kind of answered my next question. What, what are you most passionate about? So I don't know if you want to elaborate more on that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm passionate about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> slightly, <laughs> but, but yes. And, and it has to be, has to be a passion. But you know, you, you ask yourself like, where does, where does passion come from? First of all, it comes from what I mentioned in the beginning, and I call it a sense of justice. When you are going somewhere, doing something, see it on TV, whatever it may be, something that rises up in your heart and says, that is not right. Yeah. That has to change. And so much so that I personally am willing to change it. I'm willing to get in there and change it. And that's where it really begins. That's where passion begins. That's where calling begins. It's how you know what you're called to. And, and then from the next point on, you, you begin, you, you start something that's really always exciting at the beginning, and it becomes a huge amount of work. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes a huge burden. Uh, you know, some, for some of us, a huge amount of stress, whatever it is. And then the next thing kicks in, you have got to stir up your passion Come on. for that thing. And how do you do that? Worship in Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Worship in Jesus, and I love the worship this morning, guys, really. It's just great, you know, and, and I really appreciate it everywhere I go. I appreciate the people that invest themselves into, into worship and the whole ministry of the church, all the people that are doing all the things. Thank God for you, and uh, yeah, that's right, and, and uh, because this is, this, is, this is the future of the next big thing, the people that are doing something right now, right, mm -hmm. that are stirring up that passion, and um, so in Thailand, we'll do a Wednesday night, every week or every other week, depending on what's going on, we we'll just get together and worship. Yeah. Doesn't even have to be fancy. Um, usually it is, but you know, <laughs> yeah. we just, uh, because as missionaries and people, doesn't matter what line of work we're in, we've got a lot of teachers there, a lot of business people there that are part of our leadership team. Um, it's just important to put everything down mm -hmm. and just worship God for an hour yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then listen to the spirit of God, listen to the heart of God, because mm -hmm. that'll, That'll bring your passion up to a new level um, every time, you know. Oh, that's... And, uh, and one of the challenges is you see people that are losing their passion. Um, and you could see it, right? Yep. That was that old song, Preaching When the Well is Dry or whatever, mm. you know, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, you see that happen. And in fact, it begins to happen, right? And you just have to um, do whatever it takes to stir yeah. that again. Whatever it takes. Well, let's go there a little bit. Um... I think there's been a lot, and, and you could probably relate to this, those of you that are wa watching too, that it sucks to lose your passion. It sucks to, to feel like you've lost the fight, or you just don't even want to fight anymore. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. if you, especially if you're ever fighting someone or, or something that you've lost, like, what am I, what am I fighting for? And, and, and we believe as a church that worship is our weapon. And I think that... I mentioned this before, but we, we need to, for a lot of us, we'd love to change our position, but we're too focused on our position when really we need to be focused on the person that is Jesus that will change our perspective. Remember, I challenged us a, a couple of weeks ago, and I said, you know, there's for a lot of us, even as Christians, we think, well, Jesus' presence is designed to fix my problem. If I could just get Jesus in it, then my problem would be fixed. Well, no. If you look at Jesus, and he said to his disciples as well, hey, come follow me. And I like a Matthew, Matthew 11, 28 of the message version. It says, are you tired, burnt out on religion? Come and follow me and learn the unformed rhythms of grace. He says, but he says, work with me. Walk, the work with me part we usually miss. Walk with me, work with me. And, but in that, I think some of us need to change our perspective on how we're fighting and who we're fighting. We're not at war against flesh and blood. We're at war against principalities. And how we fight, worship is our weapon. Yeah. I think for some of you, you're looking at these gigantic walls that are standing in the way. It could be finances. It could be something in your relationship. And you've been walking around it a day or two, maybe three. And then God's going to call you to shout and give praise. And those walls are going to come down. Not by your strength, but by his spirit. Yeah, so 
and if, I don't know if you want to speak to that, because I know worship, and everything we do is worship. It's not just our singing, but we do it unto the Lord as an act of worship. And worship, I have seen, has been the heart of your ministry, the heart of your family. Like, how else can you go into places and, and, and go through life when you don't have power, you don't have clean drinking water, and when we had an opportunity to come and visit you, I, I tell you what, when I flushed a toilet here, I felt bad. Because we literally flush clean drinking water down the toilet That's every true. time. <laughs> and it was hard to even find clean drinking water to drink. Yeah. But, so, yeah. but what I'm getting back to is the worship side. You know, if you want to just, how have you continued to have a family and a ministry with a heart of worship? Well... Let me start with a sad story, and there's a lot of sad stories along the way, because what you give honor to is what will come back and strengthen you. And I was born again in a church, tremendous move of God, Jesus people time. A lot of us young musicians, I was part of a band, four of us, and we all got born again together, and just right into the church. There you are. <laughs> and uh, so that was exciting. And But there were so many musicians, actually from all across Canada, young guys, aspiring musicians, and some really good ones. They got born again there. We had music sticking out our ears, you know, worship. And But there was an attitude among the old school, whoever, leadership, that it's not important. By the time Terry and I left, that place, it was full. A thousand young people got saved there, many of us musicians. We packed up our guitars and our, we packed our whole PA system and everything over to Thailand with us. That kind of shows you the passion, right? Wow. <laughs> like that was important. Took the speakers out of the cabinets and built new cabinets over there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but when we left that, that church, there was no choir anymore, no band anymore, no instruments on stage. The pastor was leading worship with his accordion before he preached. Mm -hmm. All of that potential had gone. And it's a heartbreaker, but it taught us a lesson that we just never forget. We got to Thailand. Terry and I got into it right away. Um, and we taught every one of our kids, 33 kids, every one of them to play something, play an instrument, get involved in worship. When they were 10, 11, 12 years old, we became the first traveling worship band in the nation of 70 million. Wow. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it was, I would lead with my Telecaster on the front of the stage, and we had guys playing the congas and the bongos and the, and the, the drums, and we had a, key, a little keyboard that we'd rustled up somewhere. And, uh, and it was just, you know, three chords, two worship songs, and, um, and big stage, open your crusades, you know, thousands of people there. And um, basically, you know, if we're in the key of C and I'm standing straight up, it's C. If I lean forward, you go to F. <laughs> if I lean backwards, you go to G7. <laughs> That's how you get 10-year-olds <laughs> to succeed on stage. Wow. And, 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 you know, I mean, it was just uh, that giving that honor. Mm -hmm. And I know that's why God's honoring us now. He's brought some of the best musicians in the country and some of the best bands in Asia alongside of our, of our Victory Worship Band. It's, by the way, it's victoryworshipband.com. So you can go there and get a hold of, a hold of their, their music. And, Incredible. Um, I Incredible. mean, we believe we're going to move the nations through it, right? Yeah. Like, not, not just yeah. ourselves. But. Well, we're going to partner with you, by the way. Oh, I'm awesome. putting that out there. So. <laughs> Already talking to the band. We're all going. Yeah. We're all going to Thailand. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's good. You guys can come, too. It'll right cost on. you. It'll be a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, those... yeah, we're not on a cruise ship, right? We're Are those application ship. forms you have there? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, here. Okay, just sign. <laughs> <laughs> Cat. <laughs> kidding. Um, so what would you say to a person who is struggling to find their calling? You know, some, someone that... We get a lot of this, you know, even the word calling gets thrown around a lot. And... Back to purpose, back to right. passion. You know, I, I've met a lot of people with, with, with passion, but honestly, in the wrong place. Right. Or they think that they have to go in order to find their calling. Right, right. Right? So how would yeah. you encourage somebody in this season that they're in um, to find that? How, how do they find that calling? Well, 
everybody just looks straight ahead. I, I tell my kids, we've got 33 kids, right, and, and I need their attention. I said, look at my nose. Everybody looking at my nose? You ready? Yeah. Okay, here it comes. Follow me. Somebody has to say, follow me mm. to you, That's to good. me. Right? So that we do follow somebody who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And I think the lack so much really is not in um, how do I find my calling? Where are the Moseses and the Davids and yeah, the Abrahams that are going to say, follow me? Where are yeah. the apostolic leaders yeah. that are going to say, follow me? And, um, and it, you talk about sacrifice, I think that's the biggest one. The nine to five um, attitude in ministry is what's leaving so many people out. Mm. Just saying, Canada. And <laughs> you, know, you know, and I don't want to be hard on people, but I tell you what, I, it, honestly, it's as plain as a nose on my face that the success that we've had across the nations of Asia is because we've been willing to live and go with the people mm. that we've trained. Come on. You know, when we had a student come from Pakistan, we weren't expecting it. And God says, this is your 11th talent. You remember the guy that had 10 talents and the other guy that didn't keep his and, and or didn't one invest his? It. And Jesus told him, he says, give it to that other guy that has yeah. 10. And everybody went, oh, that's not fair. It's, it's, it's not fair. What God has done for us is not fair. And so we got a guy from Pakistan. You come and study with us and learn with us and we'll teach you all about everything that we know and we'll invest everything we can in you and we will go back to Pakistan with you. Yeah. Well, now we've got 28 victory churches in Pakistan. Wow. Something like that. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's all it takes. It's not hard. You just need to go. You just need to be that, yeah. that level of commitment. So that's, yeah. that's really the, the, the secret to finding your calling. It's not just about you because your calling is to serve others. Yes, come right? on. And so if yeah, you don't connect that, that calling to where you're going to serve, it's never going to happen. Even Jesus said, right, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. But we, a lot of us just want to jump ship to the next one. We, we don't stop ever becoming servant leaders. Yeah. Jesus himself, at the very end, got down on his hands and knees and washed his disciples' yeah, feet. That's right. Yeah. right, He showed us how to, you want to lead? You need to be a servant. Right. You know, that, that doesn't go away. You don't just go up the ladder and, uh, oh, yeah, now we're just friends, you know, and then I don't, I don't serve anyone any, any, anymore. No, you, he said, you want to be a great leader? You got to learn to be a great servant unto yeah. all, and that, yeah. I would agree with you a hundred percent. Like, don't ever ask someone else to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'd rather do it with you, to be honest, because well, why should it. you get all the fun? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. So these same guys came from Pakistan. Two two young men landed in Thailand, came to the Bible school, went to the front office, said, "We're looking for the." Uh, you know, for the, the dean of the Bible school or the leader or whatever. And the girl said, oh, he's around back. They went around to the back of the building. When they looked and they, they couldn't find anybody, they came back into the office and they said, uh, there's only a couple guys down there inside the sewer digging stuff out. And they said, that's him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they had to come yeah. back again, right? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, it's that attitude awesome this is good stuff are you guys getting it are you liking this this is really good eh there's gonna there's a challenge coming your way just wait for it um <laughs> but before we get into the challenge what what can we do to to celebrate you as a you're our family and yeah. i am i am really stinking proud and honored to be a part of this family to have that you would invite me into your home um, not just in Alberta, but in your, your mm -hmm. home in Thailand to sit and eat with you guys and the discussions that have happened around the table and serve with the students is we don't do enough to celebrate our family. So how mm -hmm. can we as, as a church yeah, that's, celebrate that, and lift you up in prayer? That's a really good question, Matt, because it's so important. It doesn't matter where you are. You know that this family really um, pulls together and we need to intentionally know how to do that definitely. And of course, you know, the coming and visiting with us is a big thing because we've had guys, and honestly, we've had pastors who are so burnt out, they're just done, and um, come to visit us in Thailand and had their whole lives refired, you know? <laughs> and, and so to me, that's just so exciting, and I get refired when I come here. I mean, this is absolutely awesome. You know what you got here, guys? I mean, this is just, this is just tremendous, isn't it? And I think that's the thing is we get to, 
to um, you know rub shoulders and celebrate together the, the amazing things that God is doing. Um, and, and I think that's what we have to do for each other more than anything else. How can I look at the church in Chilliwack and say, you know, no, no, what, what, what can I do to encourage you? Well, yeah, okay, keep you in mind, keep you in prayer, and all of those kind of things, but really keep you in mind when there's somebody that I meet from Chilliwack, yeah. right? Or, or whatever it may be, right? That we, that we become the advocates for each other. To me, that's the most important thing. And, um, uh, you know, Pastor Morris, he's on, on, the, on the VCI or the VCC directory um, looking after stuff there, and we talk quite a bit. And, and he asked me, he says, what, what, what's the biggest thing that we can do for you? And I said, advocacy. advocacy. If, we, if we have kids come on, on seven weeks in Asia, they're going to get their lives changed. And some out of them are going to enter the Bible college, and they're going to be nation changers. And we say that we're people that has a vision for the world, right? And that we send missionaries and all those kind of things. And that Jesus has never changed that. He still said, go into all the world. Yeah. He didn't say, just send somebody else, right? Yeah. <laughs> go into all the world. And so that's the deal. If we can see how we as a church, we as a family, even we as a business, you know, I mean, We've done this lots of times. If I was a businessman in Canada and I had a young employee who I could see tremendous potential in, I'd tell him to go to Thailand, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'd say, here's your first thousand towards your, you know, your support. Um, and, and that's the thing that really makes a huge difference for us because it's that momentum. I mean, you can imagine when a group of new students land there in September and they're just wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. And the first thing we do is put them to work. We're going to paint this building. We're going to dig this ditch. We're going to do this. We're going to be handing out food on the streets, whatever it is. And they're like, yeah, but I'm tired. No, no, no. You haven't seen any, <laughs> anything yet. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's really the secret. You know, the key to, su to su feeling successful is to succeed, yeah. right? To actually do that's, something yeah. that's, that's yeah. producing, yeah. So well, We know faith without works is only dead. Right, and mm -hmm. I like that you said that the commission is to go. It was never to stay, you know, go. Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing? You know, you, you want your miracle? It takes motion. It takes motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is leading into the last question, our, ch our challenge, actually. Um, could you just share with us a little bit about 40, uh, 40 Weeks in Asia or the Bible College, and then we've, we have a video uh, that we can play, right. but... Okay, yeah, the, the video will give you some good visuals and, and pictures, but the, um, it's seven weeks in Asia, July and August, every summer, except this summer and the last summer, because we got kind of messed up on that. But it's seven segments for young people, and we'll usually have a group of ten. If there's too many, we'll split it into two groups of ten, um, so that they can really have some qualified hands-on time. Uh, and uh, we have young people from all over Canada come, and we take their devices away, and, uh, and we go and do, th do things. Let me just mention, there was a, a young girl quite messed up. You know, life is messy. And she came from Cold Lake, Alberta. Beautiful young lady. And um, just, you know, thought she knew Jesus, right? <laughs> but they really, really get a hold of, of, of Christ because we begin to see things that you've never seen before. You walk across the border into Cambodia, and there's the, the AIDS clinic that is nothing but a room with rubber mattresses. And the toilet is outside, and there's no door on it, and it faces the street. And you don't get food unless some relative brings you food. Well, you go in there, and these broken people. Well, well as a young person, it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll really just, and it blows them away. This young girl, we were farther into Cambodia, and a place where we were planting a church, and it was her turn to preach. <laughs> just amazing this this uh i get so excited when i hear tell these stories that just bear with me this army general who's got no legs because cambodia is full of landmines right he's got no legs he's in a wheelchair but he's still an army general and he's got his whole entourage of soldiers with him come into this meeting and he gets born again <laughs> and he starts a church on the military base because this young girl preached wow. well is that life changing or what? You just never walk away from that. You never, you never forget that. She's, she's got two kids now. And last time I was up there, she's, Pastor Al, I got to get back there. You know? wow. 
And so that's, that's really, um, really how, how it works. And then when you get into the Bible college, basically you come on seven weeks in Asia, and that's your commitment. But then we take your passport and your return ticket away and put you in Bible college. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and then, yeah. And then phone your phone your family later. And no, no, actually, but we do put a lot of um, what would you call it? Invitation pressure, invitation yeah. energy into them, yeah. because we we know that there's so much potential. And then the Bible college is two years or four years, um, and then this commitment to and it's full on worship program, full on media program. We've been doing TV for twenty years or whatever, full on. Uh, you know, kids program, we've got 80 kids in our schools right there on home base and kids all up and down the street, coffee shop program, <laughs> all yeah. of that kind of stuff. And, um, and then my program, the one that I run, is actually um, how to do bricklaying and electrical and plumbing and all that kind of stuff because um, we've got Bible schools now all across Asia and these guys have been able to weld their own bunk beds together and put the roofs on their buildings and all that kind of stuff. It's absolutely exciting. So we just learn to do that all together, and we do it all together. Man. And um, it is absolutely life-changing, guaranteed, money back. Awesome. So, And I understand you're looking for 10. 10 right now, yeah. We've got four going with us, so I need six more hands. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, young people to join the Bible College um, Basically, what happens is if you come from here, uh, then you become kind of the, the core of the English group, the English medium of the Bible college. And the idea is that we're doing this for the nations of Asia. So the guys from Burma can come, the guys from Cambodia can come, and you will help them learn English, become fluent in English in one year. In fact, they will wow. be your roommates and your homework mates and everything else. And then that way, you know, if you leave from here, you land in Bangkok, you're a missionary the first day. Like, that's it. We are, we are here to serve others and help <laughs> these other guys. And that's, that's why 10 nations with churches, 100 and some churches across Asia now. Yeah. So With great risk comes great reward. Let's, uh, can we see the video? Yeah. Let's, let's see it. that video now. We are not locked down kind of people. And I need 10 young men and women to deploy with me to the front lines of the Great Commission in Southeast Asia. Boots on the ground, September 1st. The best decisions are the ones that are made in response to what's tugging at your heart. You know, nothing amazing will ever happen in your life unless you pull the trigger. I don't think there's ever been one that said, man, I regretted that. If you have what it takes, so do we. Only room for 10. Come on, we'll make whatever sacrifices, whatever diligence, commitment we need to make because God has called us to the ends of the earth. Jesus didn't say get ready to go. He said go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Your plans for me will stand unshakable and true. My days are in your hands. My future rests secure. I've heard all of the reasons why you can't do it. Just put a lid on it. And do I have a deal for you, $800 a month. You can't even live at home for that. Covers all your tuition, travel around in the country, room, board, food, everything, all covered. You won't find anywhere, including short-term missions, that you can go for 800 bucks a month. You can go to our website, victoryasia.com. All the details are there under Bible College. You can find the application form. And you know what? You get to earn a degree while you're out on the front lines of the Great Commission, winning the world for Jesus.
and you can be part of the rockin'est worship group in the Eastern world. We can do this because we do it together, and it's a call to sacrifice. It's a call to a higher level of commitment and a higher level of adventure. We train as we go, and you don't even need a coupon for the $800 special. Everybody gets the deal because we are coming out of this COVID era ready to kick butt. Where do you want to end up? This is the on-ramp. You can exit normal life here. This is real apostolic frontline Great Commission wartime. There's no fluff here. There's no concern for creature comforts. We are out on the front lines of places like Pakistan and Nepal and Sri Lanka and India and Malaysia and Cambodia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam. And if you got any questions, just let us know. We'll make up whatever answer you need to hear to get you here. I only need 10 people to see this video, but it has to be the right 10. So if there's any young man or woman that you know that might need this life-changing opportunity, please go ahead and share it with them. So cool. If you think you can come to College Street and not get schooled, <laughs> You got another thing coming. We're, we're going to challenge you. The Victory Movement is all about challenging you, bringing the best out of you. You know, our vision is to reach, teach, and mobilize. And we, we don't just talk about it. We do it. Thank you so much, Pastor Al. Um, you know, we know that you had mentioned this about, about being born again and how everything changed. You were, you were already rocking out. You are in a band. You had all this stuff. And... And there was sacrifice, there was giving up. But when, when you have that relationship with Jesus, I'm not talking about religion, the relationship with Jesus, things just get messed up, turned around, upside down. But I'm telling you, it is a life of freedom. It is a life of adventure. It is a life of calling. But you will not discover your calling unless you have Christ. You won't make... He's the one that will take what looks like a mess right now and make it a masterpiece. But you need the Spirit of God in you. And, and I want to challenge you, if you're here today and you've been doing it your way and you've tried and, you know, something in, in, in what Pastor Al spoke today and shared with you or what you see, everything rises and falls on relationship. Our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Jesus himself was, was challenged as a, as a teacher of the law. When the religious leaders came up to him and said, Teacher, out of all the laws, what's the most important? And you see, they had what was called the Ten Commandments. They had ten laws that were given to them. But you know, as human beings, we tend to make it difficult at times for people, for ourselves and for others. And we, we tend to misdiagnose. And when we misdiagnose, we mistreat. And that's what I mean about the, the religion sign. You know, Paul, Paul talks about true religion is taking care of the orphans and the widows. That's the religion. That's true religion. But mad made religion. Jesus said, you know what? Out of all those laws, you took the 10 and made 613 out of. Everything hangs off this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind and soul and, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love others. But you might be thinking, well, pastor, you have no idea. I can't love a person that has done this or didn't do that. I know you can't, but God can. Because 1 John 4 says that God is love. And, and you, we've all been to weddings and they, and they share 1 Corinthians 13, all oh, love is this, love is that. But if you have not love, you have nothing. 
Jesus said himself, you look to the scriptures for salvation, but it's the very scriptures that point to me. It's always pointing to Jesus. So without that relationship, without the God of love in you, how can you give what you do not have to give? But God the Father loved you so much, it says that he sent his one and only son. He sent his son Jesus to this earth. That whoever, whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And Paul, a man that was formerly known as Saul, who seemed to have it all together. He was very religious. He had a letter. He had authority to go around arresting these so-called Christians, this Jesus movement. And he did silly things to them, hurtful things. He watched some be stoned to death, put in prison. But he had an encounter with Jesus that changed his life upside down. And became known as Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, which we read today. And he said in Romans 10, 9, if you want to have this, you want to have this relationship. He said in Romans 10, 9, if we believe in our hearts that God the Father raised his son from the grave, and we confess with our mouth that he is Lord, that we will be saved. And all th throughout history, you can study it and you can see that three days later, Jesus overcame sin. He overcame death. He took all of that on the cross. He was that sacrifice for you and for me. Three days later, he rose again and he stuck around for 40 days, revealing himself to people. And you know what? The greatest evidence of all were the people that he said, come and follow me. The people that he chose, the misfits, the people that didn't make the cut, the not so bright, the people that, that took advantage of people with money, that were tax collectors. He chose them to follow him. And they were messed up and they made mistakes right up to the cross where most of them fled from the, when, when Jesus was crucified. But when he came back and he revealed himself to them, they would not deny to the point of death the resurrected Christ. That's how Jesus can take someone like us that feels like a coward and make us more than a conqueror. That can take someone like us that feels like the victim right now and become victorious. So I'm going to ask, if you're in the house, if you're watching online, would you just stand to your feet right now? I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And maybe you prayed a prayer like this once before. But let's be honest, like me, there was a time where you were doing it your way. There was a time when you were comfortable. There was a time when you thought you knew what was best. And now the thought of leaving and giving up your comfort scares you to death. But you know that you were called for more than this. And it's time to turn from doing it your way and turn to him and make him Lord over your life. Come back to him. So could we just pray this prayer all together right now? And if you've never prayed this prayer, would you do so with your whole heart? Just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus. I know what it's like to feel lost, to feel scared, and to feel broken. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm ready to do it your way. Let me hear you say, dear Jesus, I believe that you came and you died for me. And say, I believe that you rose from the grave. Would you come into my heart? Would you be Lord over my life? I thank you that today is a new day. 
And I thank you that your promise, let me hear you, that your promise is greater than my problems. I walk with you in Jesus' name.